I uh, asked a friend, Bill, um, why he thought, um, why he understood or the theosophical view of why God um, wanted to um, create the universe and life as we understand it and so on. And he was puzzled. He didn't uh, think that um, he had a clue or had thought about it, really, that, um, uh, in a sense, how on earth would he know, you know? And I was uh, amazed because um, I, um, I do wonder very much um, why God wants to do something, what his purpose is, what his motive is. After all, I think in my little way that I understand uh, some of his values and therefore can conjecture as to what his needs are, what he sees as important, important to him. I mean, his values are the things that are important to him. And our view is, well, my view is anyway, that um, if if you like, is born of him, created by him. We have his, um, his self, his material, his genetic, his spiritual genetic uh, um, form is, um, is the same as ours, not just relevant to us, but probably the same as us. And even if we were different, um, we need to know what the most important person in the value in, in the universe values, um, because it's going to radically affect um, all that we are, since we are made, or as I understand it, born of him. God created man and life forms as we see it and consider it and visualize it. Why is the universe here? Because God has a, a need, a desire, a purpose, a meaning, a meaning to his life. Fantastic, wonderful life, of course, from a childlike perspective, but I mean, awesome meaning, awesome need. The need is what's driving his being, his being to meet a need, a meaning something that he values. In fact, by definition, what you value is what's driving you, what's um, dynamizing you to do what you do, live as you do, live as you live. So in simplistic terms, I mean, accepting that the Jesus view that God is our Father, and we his children. And he wanted a family. Simple as that. Wants other beings in his being to relate to his family. The wonderful variety and joy and input of a vast host of wonderful beings like himself. Wow, who wouldn't want that? And of course in a harmony, a, a love and a joy and a peace. Gaiety, beauty, loveliness, fellowship, company, laughter and, yeah, interaction, love and joy.
no question of it in my mind. That's what he wants, that's what he values, that's who he is, that's who we are. That we may delight with him and him with us always. The joy of heaven, the angels sing, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Heavenly Father. So let me give you a new view of um, the communion table as it might be referred to in Christianity. It's a place of fellowship with God and all the host of heaven meal together, joy, absolute joy. I turn this solemn occasion into a time of fellowship, joy. Of everything good. Of perfect company. The loveliness of God with all of us in all of us, that is all of us. That we relate in love and joy. Not this tragic, solemn, heavy occasion. I don't mean triviality of a party. I mean a sincere fellowship and loveliness of just being together, interacting, talking, discussing, loving, supporting, encouraging. Fellowship as it should be, eternally, and the love of God, that all heaven sings, all creation sings. Mm. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Oh, on reflection, I'm puzzled why the um, the, the a theosophical view of um, the spiritual um, universe, if you like, um, the spiritual reality, doesn't have this. Well, it has miraculous things, of course, but doesn't have this relational, interactive view of living with the presence of the reality of God. In other words, in some sense, it seems to be lacking the um, fellowship interactive side of um, understanding of the family of God, which we as children are part of. Well, I mean, I suspect what the contribution of theosophy is that is to heavily re re remind us that all of his creation is part of something that's important and of value to him. And he is intimately 
loving and caring and reacting with every part of it. You know, not just higher forms of life or, or spirit or, but you know, what we think of as less advanced forms like plants, trees, and the whole of his creation, the matter, everything, it's all something that, as I feel it to be um, significant to him uh, in a continual interactive process, sense, mindfulness and um, fullness of interactive uh, thought and concern and uh, what he has in mind, his mind being, as I take it to be, the holding of all this, that in some sense, uh, if God does not think about it, it does not exist. I exist because he thinks about me, holds me in mind, holds me in some ongoingly consistent, uh, albeit changing form, advancing, I hope, <laughs> I believe and trust, since he's God, of course, uh, everything he touches and thinks of and considers gets better, becomes more. More, f more like the loveliness of him. I personally want him to stop short of me being exactly like him, of course. I want to be able to add an individual individuality to um, his being. Um, in other words, I want to remain a separate person, but of course in absolute harmony, I mean, be awful otherwise. Well, I mean, acceptable harmony. Uh, it may be that slight disharmony is, is the very joy of living, of accommodating um, change and advance and growth and adaption and development and that it is, in fact, the very foundation of creativity to be embracing the possibility of something different and uh, more, ever more wonderful, perhaps, and that slight inharmonies, as, as we might think of it, or inconsistencies are the very spark of that that we uh, think and visualize something different to what is and, and come to think of it is not only different, but by further consideration and thought and adaption, better. And so God is ever ever um, increasing in some sense at astronomical rate, um, probably astronomically, 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 I mean, the awesomeness of God, wow, beyond breathtaking, isn't it? So. What we value in life is this fun of relating to each other, isn't it? Being with each other, the individuality and the spark on the, the joy of the interaction between unique individuals, each with something different to to bring forth into the company of us, or to rejoice with and enjoy and 
love and delight in. Do you see I'm not just? It's as if theosophy is greatly concerned and interested in the structure of the spiritual universe or universes. Um, the hierarchy is who the beings are and so forth, and in a sense how they relate, or at least in an organizational sense what their office is and what their um, field of uh, influence and control and power is. But it doesn't seem to have the vitality of fellowship. Perhaps that's why fellowship is so um, dramatically lacking in the membership. They, you know, they feud and they divide over theosophical view or or how to carry it out in the world or how they organize their lodges and procedures and what they should be doing rather than I mean they do socialize there's no question of that and when they do they're at their best um, well except when they're feeling a bit bitter and critical of each other but um, yeah well that's a big exception isn't it? goodness we don't want that in the kingdom of heaven do we not bitterness, not, not division, not suspicion, not anticipating badness, not judgment, not blame. Uh, let's not go through all the negative approach to what we want. Let's go through the positive. So I think they are the lacking in um, Taking really to heart Jesus' name for God, that he is our Father and we are his children, that he did, chooses to delight in us, because he's made us of him, to grow up to be wonderful like he is, his joy, his joy before we grow up, I mean we delight in our kids don't we, what a loveliness to have the kids, children, and uh, how much more does God feel this, and if we love good fellowship, loving kindness and interaction and joy and just to socialize and talk with and do things with and create and build with and make and plan and reason and think and visualize together how much more does God so this is what seems to be um, undernourished in our view of heaven and of God and all that he's about, his meaning to life is also ours. Well, we got a few uh, different variations on it, of course. We're all unique and we delight in that. What a joy that is. And sometimes we get people who are incredibly the same. And that's a fascination to us too. We count it all joy. Thank you, wonderful Father, dearest one, dearest friend, and wonderful one. Thank you, heavenly Father. It uh, fascinates me, the pattern 
of my recordings. You know, I, I think, oh, I'll record something. Not, I don't feel, you know, strongly motivated necessarily. Sometimes I just think, oh, I'd better put that down. And I might get, you know, four minutes of recording, or eight minutes perhaps. And then I think, oh, I'll just add a note here. I'm not sure as it continues from what I've said, but I'll add something. And it flows. And I don't, I'm not so aware of the time and how long I'm then recording, dictating, you know. And uh, at the end, of course, I save it and I realize it's added to the previous. And you know, what was, say, six or eight minutes is now 19 or 25. I think, goodness, what I added as an extra note flowed and the content was, dare I say it, good, encouraging, a joy to me. I look at it and think, wow, where did that come from? Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your hand on on these recordings. Wonderful the way thoughts just flow through our mind. And I think it's because of you. I don't think we're doing all our thinking. I think you're just pouring it in. Sure, according to our peculiarity, our individuality, and and even according, of course, to our limited view, as well as your wonderful, magnificent view of things. And all I know is that I rejoice in thinking of your loving kindness, in caring for us, which includes guiding and encouraging what we think, and the words that pour out of our mouth. May we sing lovely songs for you, Father. May we sing words of joy and goodness, blessing, the loveliness of your presence with us. That we have a wonderful time together. Forever, Lord. Forever, Lord. Forever. Heavenly Father, love you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Well, I'm now um, getting up to about 15 minutes of this recording. Listening to it again, I think, wow, that's it, isn't it? I mean, theosophists have ended up analysing and looking at and studying rather than being. We are the children of God. We are in this fantastic spiritual process of growing up spiritually. This is our wonderful, magnificent childhood in the love and care of our Heavenly Father and he's the host of heaven. And we are studying it instead of being it, entering, entering into it, rejoicing in it, playing in it, alive and living. In short, we've made it a library instead of uh, the adventure playground where everything is fun and fascinating and and a joy to be doing and okay as mature spiritual beings we're we're thinking more of a, you know an armchair fellowship in in someone's lounge God's lounge in fact his house, with him as our host, our fantastic, fantastic, fantastic father, awesome presence, 
the joy of him, the absolute love of interacting with each other, the just joy of being together, the fun of playing. Have you seen kids burst into the playground when they've been chained up in the classroom for an hour or two? They just expand out into the space. They're going to do and act and be and exercise all the freedom of creativity that's wound up in them. Although we do it in a very suppressed, civilized way, we, we um, socialize and we um, interact in the correct and kind and considerate way. <laughs> okay, well, that's who we are. But do you see, though, what heaven's about? It's more than this, you know. It's this, but a thousand times more. And probably far more than that. <laughs> I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I turn this communion table into Wow, I don't want to say a party, because that sounds trivial. I turn it into a, a wonderful celebration of life, the presence of our God and all his loving family together. A wonderfulness beyond description. Utterly beyond description, but I'm describing it. Well, I'm, I'm referring to it anyway. Come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I see the oil of joy for gladness, for sorrow. I don't know whatever it is. You know, replacing joy. It's an amazing mix of peace and joy and the fullness of life eternal. The presence of God in every fiber of our being. That our interactions be the song of heaven. Love you, Heavenly Father. Love you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. There are times when I know I'm right. When I feel the surge through my nerves in my body, I feel the tingling. When I've got tears in my eyes. When it's flowed and come from I was going to say from nowhere, but it comes from the heart of God himself. That's when I know I'm right. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Love you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I'm concerned that I said I know I'm right. I mean, I'm a master of the study of decision-making and uncertainty. And uh, I wonder in what sense I've said this. Well, I hope with all my being I've said it by the voice of God, not of myself. Um, or perhaps it's just an offering to humility. I don't know. And I don't care. I am what I am.
Child of God, thank you, Heavenly Father.